minutes are approved. Any correspondence? None other than this, what you sent to me. All right. Uh, uh, let's go on to our new business. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we're, this meeting is called uh, to uh, determine if we want to hire an appraiser to uh, appraise the value of the hospital building. Um, and uh, first off, uh, in, in connection with that, I'd like to point out that uh, the um, hospital district has really broad powers to do damn near anything we need, we deem necessary. If you will read the copies of the Montana, the ethical one, Montana law. Uh, and it says, I'll just read a couple paragraphs there. Uh, anybody else can have them there? Uh, um, anyway, um, uh, on, on the, this is power, the powers of the hospital district. A hospital district has all powers necessary and convenient to the acquisition, betterment, operation, maintenance, and administration of hospice, uh, hospital facilities that its board of trustees considers necessary and expedient. Pretty broad, very sweeping. And specifically, down there, highlighted on the parag paragraph 11, sell or lease any of its facilities or equipment as may be considered expedient. This district owns the hospital building and two other properties. We can dispose of them as we think is expedient, if we, whatever we want to do. Now, I think that um, we should just briefly review what's going on here. Um, as of a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, I felt some urgency that we resolve that, decide whether we wanted to hire uh, an appraiser or not. Uh, some things are going on. Uh, uh, we have been negotiating with St. Peter's for some, some weeks now. In fact, I think it all started back in March, early March. Since then, uh, and uh, lately, uh, all, all, during all this time, uh, St. Peter's has not been willing to give a commitment on what they're going to do. And that's not going to come up until maybe June 24th, we understand. And uh, who's doing the negotiating, negotiating is, brought, is, uh, is Todd, the health, the Tom Water, Scott Townsend Health Systems. And they are really been striving to drive the hardest bargain they can, or the best bargain, the best bargain, to get the best we, for, our, for our community. Uh, and those negotiations have included that St. Peter's wants the hospital building and apparently also the ambulance property and that vacant lot we own back in the, uh, in the back, uh, which we will we'll look at there. Um, now, since then, uh, of, of late, uh, and I guess if you can lo unload a plane load of a private plane in Helena and bus, bus them or drive them to here without people noticing it. And about that time, a, uh, a, bus, a plane load of executives from Sanford Health came here. They're interested. I'll tell you a little bit about Sanford Health. And also interested is, uh, is a Billings Clinic. Some of that was kind of hush up, it was all kind of an open secret. Now, um, so St. Peter's is not the only one in the game, and uh, it may be premature to even be thinking about what, what the other, if we would reach another, uh, an agreement with another entity, we don't know. I want to just briefly tell you just a little bit about the Sanford Health is not a lightweight. We haven't heard much from them out here, but... Um, <coughs> Anyway, when that plane load of them came here, I think there were about six of them, so one was ten of But their chief operating officer was among them, and accountants and so forth. Sanford Health is really big in the Midwest. Uh, here's North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Minnesota, and Nebraska. Look at all of these down there. They, got, um, they have 44 medical centers, $6 billion in re annual revenue, 
They operate 482 clinics, 269 uh, uh, senior living centers. They even have their whole, own health care plan with 190,000 subscribers. It's a big deal. Now, why they're interested in getting a toehold in Montana, I don't know. But they are apparently interested. So, it's just not a deal as with St. Peter's. It's, it's not locked up for sure. All right. Billings Clinic, I think you all know, is probably one of the biggest health care providers in Montana. <coughs> and we're delighted that they have shown more interest. At one time, they had not shown much, but apparently it's been revived. So, um, with that said, um, I'm not sure where we want to go from this. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, Corey was the one who, who was first suggested, Corey, Corey Swanson, our uh, county attorney, who first suggested that, um, to me and Vic, that we get the building appraised. And uh, I'd like to hear from Corey on why he thinks it's necessary that we just let the board decide what we're going to do today. Could you, Corey, yeah, happy to. Yeah. So the the title uh, Title Seven uh, Part Thirty Four is the hospital district portion of statute. We've if you haven't looked at that in great detail, I've pretty well uh, poured over it the last few years. So it, it's accurate that the hospital district has the authority to lease, purchase, uh, sell, convey, however, uh, its properties, but that it is not a completely unbounded uh, authority. It still has to be done in accordance with the principles of of our obligations to the public and to the taxpayers and to ensure that we're getting fair value for that. At this point, we don't know what is the fair value for that hospital building. And certainly you've got the fact that it's it's at a good location and, and all that, but also the fact that there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done on it. As this you know, contemplated deal goes forward, there's clearly uh, a lot of it that we've, we've kind of held back and, and just waited to see what was going to develop between Townsend Health Systems and St. Pete's, but if if that deal contemplates that St. Pete's or if it ultimately ends up someone else wants to purchase the building, uh, I believe it's important for us as as the and you as the board that's responsible to the taxpayers to know really what we're looking at in terms of a value of that building, and uh, so just you know there's been some suggestions thrown out there. Oh, it'll just be a token amount, but we don't know really even what we're dealing with, and so an appraisal makes sense. So, something to keep in mind is, is what we would be looking at for an appraisal is the appraisal of the building and the property, not the business operation going on within it. So, THS is already doing that discussion with St. Pete's, and, and that would be a separate appraisal. So, we'd simply be asking for appraisal of the, the property itself. The um, other thing to keep in mind is that there is uh, this balance of registered warrants, right, that that the county has purchased and which is, is slowly being repaid according to the payment schedule. So obviously that's an important factor for us to consider that um, when it comes to finalizing such a deal, it's important to look at the statutory requirements, one of which is that the, the, the hospital district has to pay off any debts that it has, and so that's considered uh, a debt. So that, I think we're around $500,000 right now is the outstanding balance of, that, right. of those registered warrants. So clearly that's a factor that goes into what ultimately the purchase price would be. So my recommendation is that you do in fact spend a little bit of money to have a commercial appraiser uh, do an appraisal of, again we're talking the real property and the building itself, accounting for maintenance and, and other needs, and not not including within the appraisal the ongoing business because that would be a separate valuation for THS to do. In fact, they've already done that. Um, that's my recommendation. I guess I'll add one more thing to that. I was contacted yesterday by a property um, researcher, title company, who's doing research, didn't say for whom, but for someone who's interested in uh, the chain of title and all the title report that goes with all the hospital district properties. Okay, my guess is it's St. Pete's, but they didn't tell me. Who. They asked, "What are the what are the items that they will need for finalizing a closing of a sale of, of property from the hospital district?" And I never encountered that before, but did a little little looking at it. And what I recommended that they ask for in the event of a closing is that the board members 
that there would be the proof that we acted lawfully. So the oath of office for all the board members, um, proof of either appointment or election, because that's you either were appointed or elected, depending on how you that vacancy was filled. And then just the proof of, say, the minutes and the resolution and the vote at a lawful at a public meeting approving a sale. So down the road, if we if we sell it, that's what I'm recommending they ask us to produce for them. So that was brought up to me a month ago as it has everybody on the board recorded their oath of office. If you have not, please do so right away because that's that's something that matters. So mm -hmm. that's my last thing is um, I do have some concerns about the ambulance building being part of the sale. I understand that maybe they, under, they understand now. I've communicated to the St. Pete's attorney that due to the contamination in the Brownsfield stuff that they may not want to acquire that and they, they seem to agree with me. And also that if, if that cleanup is to go forward as it's currently being initiated, that it really needs to be owned by a public entity, whether that's the hospital district or ultimately the county. My recommendation is that it's not included in any sale to St. Pete's or to anyone else that might be the buyer. Thank you, Gordon. Um, Dick? Yes, um, <clears throat> I agree with uh, Corey, especially since uh, we not only have St. Pete's, but with Sanford Health and Billings Clinic uh, uh, showing more interest in the uh, doing a merger or acquisition with us, that uh, it's important that we know what the, the value of that building is, uh, especially in that the, uh, the PHS uh, owes us uh, the money on the loan, which of course we in turn owe to the county uh, via the warrants, that we, we understand what the value of our, our buildings are. Uh, not just our the hospital building, but uh, we do have the the property behind the the two Grover's buildings and the ambulance building. That we know what all of those are worth. Uh, I did. Phil. Phil. Oh. I did uh, uh, ask our local realtors for uh, a list, you know, for some uh, appraisers. I spoke to one appraiser in Helena. Um, his father started the, the company 50 years ago, so they've been doing appraisals in this area for 50 years. He himself has been doing it for 32 years. Um, and he, he took a, a quick look at um, you know, the, the uh, size of the building, etc. And he estimated that the appraisal would run about $7,500. So much, much less than uh, we had uh, thought it might cost. Uh, I noticed that uh, we talked about the value of the building. I want to, I want to say a few things. Because I personally, uh, I personally am against hiring an appraiser. Um, and I'll tell you why, and you can vote on it if you want. Uh, but first off, I wanted to talk about what St. Peter's did on their their inspection report itself. They inspected that building out there, all the way around. Uh, and I'll read a couple paragraphs. There's an extra copy right here, too. Do they need it? The, the, the yeah. FS, a, e -P -H -U -S, is actually what kind of a, an abbreviation for it's essentially a, a stucco finish on the building. All joints need to be sealed properly. It appears that much of the exterior was sealed with insulated foam that's all gone now. All the trim on the soffit is weathered and rotten. Needs to be placed in the, be placed in the room. The roof, and they talk about the roof and the problems on the roof and the leakage and so forth. And so all the windows need to be replaced. The seals are all of them leak. Um, give us pretty good marks on, uh, on the electrical system. But it does note that the generators, the emergency generator, 36 years old, and the estimated replacement, it says it has to be replaced, uh, it's about $275,000. The emergency lighting in the building is insufficient and does not meet code. It needs to be on. It goes on. Anyway, so they, 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 uh, they, they make an estimate of what needs to be done 
immediately. Well, I don't think it need be needed, but they say it does. $2.89 million, almost $3 million in, in repairs. Well, if you subtract out a couple of those applies, and then one of them applies to the uh, ambulance building, $75,000 for, uh, for uh, 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 tearing it down, and $85,000 uh, for something else that would have been applied. That was the, uh, um, the, tra the traveler's house across the street, which wouldn't apply. So there's around around 2.7 million dollars. They 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 think it our building this building hospital building needs for repairs. Now, uh, you know, last summer last fall I was driving around and and, uh, and took a trip down to Red Lodge, going through Red Lodge, and they have a brand new beautiful hospital building down there that's owned by Billings Clinic. Uh, they abandoned the. Um, County has abandoned its old hospital building, which was a pretty nice brick building, stand up on a hill. Now there it sits, uh, weeds growing up around it, broken windows. No, but it has no value. The county doesn't want to tear it down, apparently, because they don't want to spend the money. I look at that. If this building is not used as a hospital, and sometime when St. Peter leaves it, it will have no value. And I think it has very little value now to St. Peter's. Uh, I don't want this to be a cause of them walking away by bringing a lot. Now, look at look look at this. Look at this way. Um, Broadwater Health Center's total debt, and if, and if I'm wrong, Kyle can correct me, is around two point one point eight million dollars. Of that, five hundred thousand dollars roughly is on our warrants, but the total debt is one point eight million dollars. Now, what I would like to see, and what they've been negotiating for is for us in, with St. Peter's, and I'm sure they will with everybody else, is that the buyer has to assume the total the obligation for all of those debts, $1.8 million. Of that are $500,000. We want them to do that. Now, we, can, we, we have the option to say, we could sell the building for $1. Now that looks bad, really looks bad. But if they're paying off the debt, all that debt doesn't look bad. So can we say, all right, we'll make you this deal. We'll, re, we'll restructure it. Um, we'll sell you the building for $1.8 million. You give us that money, then we'll pay off the debts. So, in any case, whether we have a uh, appraised uh, uh, or not, we know it's not going to appraise for, for that much money. But we get that much money for it. So why don't we take the opportunity to do it? To, to, uh, 5000 uh, what was it, $7,500 is a lot of money when you consider we have no income. Uh, we say, well, we have some, because we get we have no income coming in from the mill levy anymore. <clears throat> but we do get about roughly thirty-two thousand dollars from the county in general taxes. But that's permissive. They don't have to do that. They cut it off next year. I don't expect that to continue at all. So we essentially have no money coming in. Seven thousand five hundred dollars a lot of money, because I don't think that it's going to make a damn bit of difference to the buyer if if, if it's appraised or not. If they want an appraiser, let them pay for the appraiser. I don't want to do it. So, what does anybody else think? Really? We can think about it. We, can, we, don't, we don't have to make a decision today. I think Rick told me that the appraiser he talked to more said it would be two or three or three or five weeks out. Three to four weeks. Three to four weeks out. Yeah, obviously. Well, I have a building, I have a building you know, two buildings on uh, the highway. Different times people have asked me the value of it, and I, and I tried to hire an appraiser to find out what that's worth. And really, it's very subjective, and usually always based on comps, as they say. Well, if you don't have a comp that's just like your situation, right. it's, a, it's, it's just somebody's opinion. Yes, yeah. So unless you have like an appraiser that specializes in hospitals that maybe would know what that building costs and the land and stuff, I think it's very subjective where if you just hire a regular real estate person. I, I had people give me really crazy estimates, you know what they said was the value of it. And so it kind of turned me off on appraisers. I mean, and it's very, very expensive as you said. My, my feeling is that, well, first off, we're, we're not asking a realtor to appraise it. We're asking an appraiser. A certified appraiser. Right. Uh, secondly, um, 
I don't think it ever hurts to know what the real value of the building is, especially since the um, tax appraise, uh, the taxable value appraises out at almost five million. Yeah. There are people who are going to, we do have authority to do things, but uh, we are, again, a public board. So I, I, would, I would question why, even if we said 1.8 million, uh, that we're selling it for 1.8. If the appraisal is for 5 million, yeah. you know, wow. what's the deal? And while it does cost us money and we no longer have our, our mill levy, we do have um, mills that the commissioners have adopted to us. If, if an acquisition goes through, and using St. Pete's as, as an example, if they take that all over, uh, the money we do have has no reason to just sit there. It should be doing something for us. Uh, that, I, 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 I'm the one that looked that up, found out that that it was on it, which is a bunch of baloney. That building is not worth four million dollars. It's not. That may be, but that's what the county's appraising. That's it. what they are, and we don't pay taxes. And, and, and if we just say, well, we don't think it is, if we have an appraisal, then we can say what it's All worth. Right. If we don't, it's the county is the county is crazy. You know, we know what it's worth. Well, well I we do if we uh, have an appraisal. Uh, 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 and I'll recognize myself again. <laughs> uh, I get that prerogative. Um, you know, for the next ninety days, I'd recommend we don't do anything and uh, see what happens. Uh, and that's, we, we, that's we, fine. We, we want. We want to. I, I, I'm, we can approve, I, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm really we scared can improve this. doing the appraisal without actually hiring somebody. I'm glad that Tom's on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is it likely that the deal, when it goes through, is going to ask for an appraisal? I doubt it. St. Peter's did not ask for, ask for an appraisal. They sent their own inspectors in, and there's their report. Uh, and they said it's going to cost them three million dollars just to get it into shape. Uh, I think that if St. Peter's or anybody else comes in, they will use that building for several years or thereabouts to see if they're making a profit and how good their business is. And they will do the minimum maintenance they have to. Uh, I don't think that facade is going to get fixed for $200,000 or $200, whatever the hell it was. Uh, because it's not necessary. The, right now, the air conditioning system is, is faulty. Uh, Kyle told me that they had to put like Freon in there the other day that's going to cost $2,500. Well, it's our, he's going to send us the bill because it's our obligation to maintain that building. All right? Uh, so we'll get that bill. I'm hoping that before somebody takes it over, we don't have to repair the whole air conditioning system, which is going to cost a hell of a lot of money. A hell of a lot. Close the building down. We don't do it. And we haven't got the money to do it. So I want to have every nickel we've got, I want to save until I'd like to see the next 90 days and see what happens. Um, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. I, I really have to uh, thank the um, towns and health systems the negotiators for being as persistent as they are and as hard driving as hard as bargaining as they're trying to. Whether they'll get it or not, I don't know. But they're, so it's like a game of poker, you know. Uh, show your hands. Well, St. Peter's hasn't shown its hand yet. They haven't. Not in writing. They made lots of promises, but nothing in writing. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we stand. What do other board members think? Or, well, I guess we could ask for uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? Yeah. Just, just, a, yeah. just a thought to carry with you. Uh, what is the amount of dollars you have in that account now? We have about a hundred and five thousand dollars left. I need. hundred and four. I just got it. hundred and four. But there'll be some taxes coming in. Some, but over, I don't know how much will come in when the first half taxes. And I would guess about another. My guess would be about another fifteen will be coming in by the end of the year. So, uh, um, I guess my biggest concern is uh, similar 
two years. This we went through 26 pounds of Freon as we got ready for the summer months uh, and had no cooling. That was Monday, a week ago Monday. And uh, so we tried to make an assessment in the, the core uh, of the chiller um, didn't show a leak and we couldn't find the leak and we were we were afraid that that would have to be replaced and that's a forty two thousand dollar bill and it, we would we would be shut down at the time and we'd have to pull it out and uh, I was panicking um, uh, luckily uh, after a lot more investigation it happened to be a coil that was on the roof and accessible so we could actually fix it. I don't know. It's been fixed and, and so far it's working, but it's, I, I guess the concern I have is, is we don't know uh, after 36 years what may go down and what that cost might be. Um, so I, I, would, I would urge you to uh, save every penny uh, in case we may need it. Um, in the negotiation process, um, uh, we could we could uh, make sure that uh, an amount was set aside uh, for appraisal, um, and many times uh, on a purchase, I'm also a certified appraiser, but uh, uh, many times on a purchase that it's contingent upon the appraisal, we could do something like that. Um, I don't know how many in 30 year this appraiser has uh, appraised a hospital building, but we do have a, a national appraiser that we've talked with who has done hundreds of hospitals our size across the country. Um, and uh, his fee was about 12.5 uh, with a, a lot of expertise and uh, the cost of expenses would be on top of that. Uh, so, um, you know, it's it's probably not a bad idea if you have the money, but we don't know what it is going to cost in the next 90 days or six months. Many times these processes take a year or more. It's not, it doesn't happen overnight. So I, I just caution everyone that uh, we damn near had to, had to pay out 42.5, and but we dodged that bullet. If, could, could, can I ask you, Corey, something? The, the, the reason that you, you're advising for an appraisal, is that to satisfy potential buyers, or is that to satisfy the community that's standing behind us and being able to certify or to convince or approve to the community that we have done all the right things? Well, it's primarily the second one. As a board of trustees, you have a fiduciary duty to the taxpayers, okay? And I believe that at this point, uh, I'll tell you what my concern was. My concern was over the last month or so, I've, I've heard statements of, oh, we're going to sell this thing for a nominal fee. We're going to sell this thing for a dollar. Well, number one, it, we don't know what this thing's worth. We understand there's maintenance that needs to be done. But anybody that's a buyer is going to, in my view, you know, it's their, in their interest to find every single light fixture that needs to be replaced and, and, and blow up the cost of that maintenance. That doesn't mean that that's accurately uh, reflective of what needs to be done. But my concern is, to the public, there's a potentially right now a $500,000 bill that's hanging out there that, if this, that, that there could be a, there's no guarantee of how that is going to be paid in the event that a, that an acquisition or transfer, or whatever it would be, be called, goes through. So that obviously has to be part of the deal. And I understand that you guys in good faith are, are telling St. Pete's or other buyers that those have to be accomplished. But this board has a separate responsibility from the THS board to the taxpayers. And I, I feel it's appropriate that you spend a little bit of money to find out what exactly we're dealing with in terms of value, costs, etc. That's really what it comes down to, is, is there has to be from this board, its own look at the situation and say, we believe we're fulfilling our duty to the taxpayers when we 
ultimately make a deal if there is a deal. And, and what you're saying then is if, if we don't provide for that in the sale documents, then we are, we are delinquent someplace. But in, in our case, we are providing for this in the, in the sale documents that uh, the buyer is committed to assume our debt to the county. Well, so I, I've and not had any of those actual conversations with the potential buyer. Okay, and it's, we still haven't yet either. I mean, we've had a lot of conversation, but nothing uh, no, nothing that's in writing. Right. So we're sitting here waiting for documents. So when we see documents and possibly see documents from any other interested parties, then we should, if an appraisal is still based on the, the contract or the, the structure of the sale. But this building is not separated out from the sale. We are offering a package that, that this building is just an integral part of that package, the same as the CT scanner, for example. So Except, except that your board doesn't have the authority to offer the building. No, Understand? but we are working in conjunction with, with this board right. where the authority lies, and we're not, you know, as long as we're together and we're operating, you know, as per our fiduciary responsibility, then, you know, the only thing I have said to you is let's hold off until we <coughs> see where this thing is going. Uh, maybe we don't, maybe at the end of the day we wind up with no buyers. And well, yeah, that's possible. I don't think the, the, what we, when I visited with your guys' attorney about evaluation, and, and he said, well, we're doing one, and I received it. It doesn't have anything on the building. It's, it's as a going concern, THS as a going concern, or however, whatever method That's the way we're for. selling the package. Right. So what I was told was that that appraisal was likely going to include the property. It didn't. So when I, when I realized that, then I said, well, hey, you know, we still have to deal with this prop. There's some kind of valuation of the property. I feel this board has that responsibility. Okay. And is, is, does your feelings suggest that we, we need this right now, or can we wait a few and see how some things develop before we commit that? Idea? Well, it's all a matter of when, when it's going to happen. I mean, the, I'm guessing the June 30th timeline is probably not happening at this point. That was what it doesn't work that way. Yeah, so I'm not saying that it has to be done tomorrow, but I'm saying is it's going to take some time for an appraisal but to it, happen. But it is part of the process. Yeah, it would be best to, for at least the board to convene and make a decision, and then if if you're going to get an appraiser, you're not going to be able to get them overnight. You're going to have to give them some notice to get in and get that done. I, I would guess it's at least a couple month timeline. So, so that's that's my concern. That's why I urge them to do it while we're here today. But you know when I when and the only other comment from the, from the, the, the THS board is that that hundred thousand dollars or so that, that they have is money that is really been collected for the purpose of maintaining the building, not but as part of the sale process. Yeah. Well. And so and, and we count on that money, and and if you spend that money, it will be to our detriment. Well, but it's. I mean, this board has the authority to use that money for the uses that it thinks is appropriate. So, I mean, I, all we can I, do is I don't want you to interpret this as my actions are somehow contrary to the making this thing happen. This, my request was specifically to facilitate the deal. Mm -hmm. That I think this is a necessary step that needs to be done before it's closed. So that's why I've urged us to do this. I really tried to make my. I really, I really appreciate Corey your help and, and your thoughtfulness on it. I, I, I just think that suppose that they uh, you've got an appraiser that comes in with a, uh, an extremely high amount five five million dollars. Oh, and so we sell it for one point eight million dollars. Then the public can come after and say, "Oh my God, look what you did! You gave our building away for one point eight million dollars." It was worth time. In other words, I don't think that the appraisal, whatever it appraises for, high or low, 
we're only going to get trade tra our obligation the only obligation we really have is to see that we have a hospital operating in Broadwater County for our people to get people to get a hospital in here to do it I don't care what the building if they'll do it take over the building fine I think it's great we're going to end up with a building that's empty we don't want to do if, if, we, if, we, if we make it high enough that they walk away, we have no hospital. We failed in our obligation, our basic obligation to provide, to provide services to, to brother our county. And they might walk away if we, had, if we say, we're not going to sell you that building for a for dollar. We're going to sell it for $5 million. Anyway, that's my feeling. I don't, I don't think any, whatever the appraisal is, is going to make one damn bit of difference to St. Peter's or to... Uh, Sanford or, or Billings Clinic or anybody else. If they want that building, they want that building in as part of the overall deal, the big package. And I see that the appraisal does not help it. It gives us political cover, cover maybe, to say, oh, we, we, this, this board is, it did its duty. I don't really worry about that because we are doing our duty. We're trying to save some money. Anyway, I've spoken far more than my share, and usually the chairman shuts up, but I do. <laughs> so, uh, was there any other comments? Any other comments? Or did they, does the board, did anybody want to make a motion? Do we do yes. something? Or? I will move that we authorize doing an appraisal. Not necessarily that we hire the appraiser right now, but, but we have a vote on the board to authorize doing an appraisal. I believe that we do have a responsibility to the public to know that. And uh, I think when we're negotiating with someone, um, you know, we should know what the value of that building is. Um, uh, is there a second? The motion is to authorize hiring an appraiser. Is there a second? Then we can discuss. I'm hearing no second. No second, motion fails. No second, then the motion dies. Um, do we have any other business? We can, you know, we can talk about anything we want and we can't take any action because we're not on the agenda. But, um, we need to submit an annual budget request to the county. Seems like we have to do that by August or something. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, I, think I don't know. The agenda for next week. Oh, is that right coming up? Seems like we just got through with that. Always oh, <laughs> So does that mean that we have to have a, a budget in view by next week? Preliminary budget. A preliminary budget. I guess we could talk to you and find out exactly what we have to do to the preliminary budget. I don't, I don't know how to do it. We could dust off one of the one of last year and, and pull off a lot of money out of it. <coughs> All right, we could do that. Maybe we could do it today. It's not actually a an action item by the board, but um, Opportunity Bank requires that oh, yeah. the uh, anybody that that uh, signs uh, the checks on the board now have a, uh, a signature card. State Bank did not require that opportunity to uh, So we, we yeah. need to get those right. signature cards. All right, if everybody go there. You said to see who, Lois or somebody? Um, Lori. Lori Frost. <laughs> um, the, way our, the way it works, any, any check we sign has to have two signatures, it doesn't matter who. And sometimes it's really convenient when Missy needs to send a check, to start calling up somebody and say, are you in town, can you? Come over and sign a check. I remember the first one I signed scared the hell out of me. <laughs> it was for like fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. I just went to the bank to. They're going to change all the accounts. I don't know if anybody knows. There was a telephone. Oh yeah, tell about it. Tell us about that. Well, I think it. I'm not sure how it originated, but I think it. Um, there's there's groups that go after. When, municipalities and government entities and so it's not like 
maybe somebody down the street that would have been able to do someone. But our account was hacked, you said. The county uh -huh. account was hacked, and it was kind of, they kind of went after the you know, hospital districts. But anyway, it isn't anything that we did. We didn't give out the numbers to anybody, but they, they went through the payroll and tried to pretend like they were a, a county employee and that they were changing their direct deposit. And, uh -huh somehow got some of the accounts and stuff. It was caught by both the state bank and also by the county. But now all the accounts are going to have to be changed. They're, they're not the same number, but they're linked together. So so we have to we have new account numbers and new, hmm. new uh, checks that will have to be prepared. I wonder how they did that. They're very smart. Uh -huh. Jody Carlton was telling me that they they have this software that, well, you know, they monitor all the emails that go through, and they have these, these words that, when they see, like, payment or wire, then, then that email is kicked out, and they change it, and then they can insert it, and it's pretty scary, really. <laughs> we should all be afraid. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, but anyway, Joni said they've never had to do the signature cards before when it was state bank. Because really, if you're an elected member of the board, you should be able to sign checks. And I kind of feel that way, too. But she said maybe it would be easier if you only had three people sign checks. But mm -hmm. it's only five. I mean, that's not such a big deal. And I think it's important that all of you sign checks. I agree. I'm looking, looking for somebody to sign yeah. the check. Yeah. And it's also, you know, your own it. It's kind of important. You know, it's to say, we're just going to let you and John sign checks. Well, what about the rest of you? I don't need to sign checks. <laughs> <laughs> The idea. Uh, so, uh, what do we want to do about the next meeting? Maybe we want to just wait until the call of the chair, or, uh, you know, I, I can, I don't want to illegally just call people in and say, well, here's what's going on in the, the negotiations. But I'd like you to all have an idea of what's going on and, as much as we can. And, uh, and right now, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty public of who, who's involved and who the players are. I personally, I don't know why I should be giving my opinion, I personally really do like Sanford Health. Uh, but they're a long distance away, would you rather be dealing with somebody in Sioux Falls or in, in Helena? Well, Helena is easier, it's closer, but gosh, the Sanford has an impressive record of what they're doing. They really are, they have some outstanding, outstanding clinics and hospitals and doctors and it's just a wonderful organization. But they happen to have, Sanford comes from a guy who donated more than a billion dollars to them. <laughs> Shall we put him on our list? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Give letters. Well, <laughs> anyway, that's as much as I know about it. And, uh, um, not, not that I'm, it, I do want a hospital. It, it, it's some, it, it, wherever we end up, I want a bigger health care organization in, in, in Townsend. So, uh, so without objection, I'll say uh, I'll, uh, we'll meet Colin Chair. Do we agree with that? Well, I, th I think you might need to do a meeting for the budget request. Oh, the, the budget county. request. And, and since know, it's not on the agenda today, you might need to ask do we, them do, to give do, you more do, time. Do, do, we need a, do we need approval of a budget? I, I know. Could, could, the, could, um, could we do this? Could we have the board right now pass a, a motion authorizing the chair and Missy to submit a budget to the county? It's going to be just like mm -hmm. I know. last month yeah. here. Anyway. It's, it's not on your published agenda. I don't think you can do it. Uh, you, need, you need to do another noticed meeting to do it. So we, we illegally did it last year. We just submitted the budget. I think we actually had a meeting last year. I think it was approved, yeah. Uh, but I think many years have gone by where we just submitted it. Right. I, years, no I'd recommend issue. just tell the county you're going to be a couple weeks late with it. Right. and do another meeting down the road. Well, I don't think it's any big deal to call a meeting. Uh, yeah. Well, it's Not by Tuesday, though. Is it Tuesday? Uh, uh, uh. What does anybody suggest? Is uh, Missy, you want to pick a date or something? Or? Well, I 
Okay. I'm gonna. What What is the day that it's supposed to be? Tuesday. Oh, next Friday. Oh, next Friday. Well, today is Wednesday, so we could uh, call it a week from today. Let's have time to give a notice. It wouldn't take the minute. I mean, it's not going to be very controversial or anything. Just got to pay the bills, is all. What if we don't submit a preliminary budget? What if we don't submit a preliminary budget? Don't get any money. <laughs> don't get any money. Does that mean we can't spend the money we have in the bank already? I do think you probably could spend. You just have to, you just have to make sure you have all the warrants for it. I beg your pardon? You have to make sure you have claims for it. Well, you make sure we have claims for them. What did you spend out of the budget last year? Uh, we spent a lot of money on the budget last year. Yeah, but then we had no. I mean, this year, it comes to about thirty thousand dollars. It's the you know it's the clerical and the report that you do for the state post office box that kind of stuff. If we, if we the only the only thing we're asking for is income from the county. And, well, we don't have to have a. a County authority to budget to budget what we already have, though, do we? Yeah. We do. No. We don't. No. no. So we're only asking for what we. It would be budgeting for what we're asking you to provide. So what's your what's your legally what we're legally obligated to give? You? You're not. I don't think you're. Legally, yeah. You're obligated. You legally can. Maximum, yes, for the maximum. They're, they 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 can they 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 can't go above that, but if they're not obligated to. For example. Well, I would suggest that we do a similar budget that we've done before, set up a meeting. Approve. So we know that, so just, so if we were to budget, we can budget to for, uh, um, for practical purposes. Uh, last year you gave us 32 mills, and so we would ask for 32 mills if you would ask for that. We didn't give you 32 mills. No. Two, okay. two. It came two mil. Or two mil. <laughs> 2.2. <laughs> two. <laughs> Thanks, right. difference. There's a big difference. There's a significant difference. But, but, so we could budget for that amount. Uh, that would just be an ask. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then you list the So that's pretty that simple. You, you but we, 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 and we're just estimating, we're just estimating the dollars. All right. I guess we could do that pretty easily. And, uh, why don't why don't we schedule a meeting for next week, short meeting, um, where we can approve the budget? Because we can't do it, we can't do it today. All right. Is there a second for that? Uh, do I hear a motion? I think we kind of need a motion. I, I will move that we we meet next Wednesday to approve the budget. I second. Yes. Give a time on well, that. Thank you. Can you want to give a time on that? Um, the morning works for me, so 10.30. John? That would be fabulous. Okay. All right. He said fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of second, he said fabulous. We'll take that as a second. <laughs> Stop, done, second. Is that a John Dan? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, so where are we going to meet? Right here? Well, we'll I'll walk across the hall and put it on the calendar. Beat the commissioners to it and make it good. Okay. All right. Next one. Um, so I'll just say in the courthouse. So uh, you just like today. Yeah, in the courthouse. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, just a thought. Is that going down the line. Uh, Need to vote on the motion. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Any discussion? I'll, I'll call in question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it. Uh, we, uh, I don't want to delay the meeting a whole lot, but just thinking about uh, down the line, uh, if and when the um, district goes dormant, in other words, somebody comes over and takes it over, we, we don't have any business, then we really wouldn't need a budget. We would just kind of, all right. Okay, I guess uh, any further business? 
Do I hear a motion to adjourn? We do don't need a motion, but I'll hear it. I move to adjourn. Second. I'll second. If, if nobody seconds, we just stay here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that motion dies for lack of a second. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. For